Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. We've got a fun trade to discuss. Ooh. Twins and Marlins. We also got some Tommy John talk and a little extras if we get to it. Let's talk ball. Mm. Let's talk ball. Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. My name is Jimmy. I'm sitting next to Jake. BBD is in the corner of the room. And Trev drinking out of an I Love New York mug. Coming to you from California. It's Monday and there was a trade. And we've got some talking to do. Twins and Marlins trade. And there's so many different opinions on this trade. I think on all sides of the spectrum. So I'm excited to talk about it. But first, I must ask you, Trev, how are you doing? James, thank you for asking. I'm doing wonderful on this Monday morning. It's a little chilly outside, a little windy here, um, but I'm all bundled up in my nice jacket that you like. So I'm happy to be talking ball with you. I do want to get into the the trade here because it is for my twins and Jake's Marlins. And you're right. There's a lot of differing opinions on this and we'll break it all down for the people, but I'm doing great, Jake. You look great. How are you feeling? Trev, James, Davis, everyone with us. I feel good. I feel good, man. I'm uh it took me about a, a full week to recover from my bachelorette party on Saturday. I was like, oh, I feel okay again. Uh so that was good. Uh tough for talking giants and their watch party went to that. Uh, but I'm doing well and yeah, I want to get ahead of this one. You know, I know a lot of people call us out, you know, we're you know, we're big on the YouTube, we're big on the podcast. And are you are you guys just using Marlins and Twins as clickbait? No. We got to talk about this one, okay? Uh, Pablo Lopez, my guy. Uh, Luis Araya is actually kind of my guy guy. Uh, but I'm excited. It, it is a quirky one. The Jazz Chisholm kicker on this is as yeah. good as it gets for me uh, as a fellow Blitzball competitor. So uh, excited to yak it up with my yaks. How you doing, yaky? If I had to, well, first off, you were drinking a beer when you walked in here. What kind of beer was it? I had a Blue Moon. Mm. I had a Blue Moon, mm. which is also the official sponsor of Talking Baseball. Nice. And Germ Boy Media. I, I start with the orange, Jim, because I'm a differentiator. Yeah. You know, and how does Blue Moon do it? My buddy just takes the beer, pours it into the orange, and then sucks it. Oh, uh, we should a do a video bit, like it. that. Takes a little bit, sucks it. Can we do that? Sure. How do we'll you do drink it. your blue moon? How do you drink your blue moon? Do you pour it in an orange peel? <laughs> yeah. There's no wrong answers. As long as it's a Valencia orange peel, that subtle sweetness and hints of coriander. Ugh. Why strike out with the same old beer when you can get something that's one o a kind? Best served with the signature orange garnish to showcase its beautiful hazy color. Trev, I know you know about that hazy color. Mm. Ooh. Mm. Make winter weather feel like spring training. Blue Moon Belgium, Belgian style wheat ale is one of a kind every time. Check out get.bluemoonbeer.com slash baseball. Get.bluemoonbeer.com slash baseball. Check out your delivery options. Winter kind of hasn't hit the Northeast yet. It's cold these days, but we haven't gotten snow at all. We haven't gotten we snow that, and we haven't we gotten like a ice cold week. We haven't had like a 17 degree week, which there was one that, that was Christmas Christmas time. week had three I days. Everyone like, was like right after. In. Oh, I was in Stop Connecticut. Talking about so the weather. I picture that with New it York. Uh, Blue Moon made brighter. Get it. Get your beer delivered. Blue Moon. I added that. Celebrate responsibly. Now, if we had to boil down our opinion, Trev, on this trade before we like dive into it, just like the headline. Mm. I'm interested to know starting off, do you think, do you like it more for the Twins or do you like it more for the Marlins? If you, if you can't, if you think it's a wash, say that. But and both of you, I'm interested in. I can uh, it's Trev's Twins. He has the honor. I mean, you want the, just the one word answer? You want me to start diving I'm, into this I'm bad I'm Chris boy. Rosing you. I'm saying just so who, uh, who do you like it better for? I like it better for the Twins. Um, when we were discussing this as a possibility, because these were rumors for a while, um, they were saying a rise for Lopez straight up. And I said, I don't know if I would do that deal. I don't know if I would do it straight up. Uh, a rise is a fan favorite. I like what he brings his ability on the baseball field. It's different. Um, it's not something that teams are like necessarily even looking for nowadays. They like guys that slug the on base percentage is great. Um, 
But, you know, the three years of control and, and the fact that, you know, you can just put him at the top of your lineup and kind of let him run. I like that. And, you know, Pablo has two years of control left. So the one for one swap, I, I just I just didn't think it was right. Um, and obviously the Twins didn't either. They refused that. Ended up getting two more prospects. And one of them, I believe, is a top five shortstop prospect that the Marlins paid like over $2 million for in the amateur um, class. So uh, once it got to that, uh, I, I like it a little bit better. You know, I'm not a big prospect guy, but you do have to, you know, have guys in your farm system. You have to develop talent. And, you know, two, I think it was like $2.6 million this guy got and some of the scouting reports on him. I like that they got a prospect along with it. So as much as it hurts because Arise was a fan favorite and people, it's it's really fun to watch him play. It's it's an ode to kind of some old school baseball, you know, the way he works at bats and, you know, he's, swinging and putting the ball in play, which is nice. Um, we've been, and I say we, in Minnesota, we've been asking for pitching for a long time. So you can't, you know, be upset when you have to give up something of value to get something you need. That's kind of where I'm at with this trade. And just in case you don't live on the internet like us or you have no idea, it's Luis Arise, Pablo Lopez, and the two prospects, Jose Salas and Byron Churio, BBD's Byron Churio. Um, I like the trade for the Twins. Um, you get Pablo Lopez, who the the past three years. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm interested to see what it looks like. You know, Marlins have played in historically kind of a little bit of a pitcher's park. Um, you know, his 2021 is is massive. I mean, a 3.07 ERA, 20 starts. That's you know, that's two starter type stuff. Last year, 3.75, 32 starts, 180 innings though. Up and, until the deadline, he was really good last year, and then he was supposed to get traded, and he didn't. We've seen players get injured sure. by that, or something else happened. But there's, yeah. you know, uh, it, it passes the eye test. He's he's in his prime, right? He's he's 26 years old. Uh, will turn 27 in March. Happy spring training. I love Luis Arise. I, I, you know, anyone that's been a listener of the show, like you're saying, Trev, any there's few and far between those guys that have the different approach that. That when you say the the dumb baseball phrases like why don't you just slap that the other way or you know keep your hands in and get like he's one of the few guys that can do that he's a he's a Brantley he's a Lemayhu he's like he's the next generation of that guy and I love watching him hit and the stats are there that passes the eye test for the Marlins the problem is okay you added this guy they needed power it felt like like they needed. They've needed offense from yeah. Their bottom like their bottom three in batting average last year everything. as a team and power like yeah. Uh, I agree with you guys. I I saw this and I like it for the Twins. I mean Pablo Lopez when healthy has been really good and he might not be the ace that's going to win you the playoff series, but hey, you need to get to the playoffs as as the Twins and. He's the type of pitcher that if he goes 180 pitches, he's going to help you every week innings. be competitive uh, innings, be competitive, even if he's not like the stud ace ace. But yeah, I mean, Arise is a very nice ball player. He's a, in this day and age, a complimentary hitter. Like you need all the power, which is great for the Twins because yeah. they have the power. So I, they are missing that cog by, by losing him, by having a guy that's bat to ball, that is a different approach. They do miss out on that, but they need needed pitching more. The Marlins, like, is he just a better Miggy Rowe? And then the Marlins are bumping Jazz Chisholm is like that kind of bat, you know, like they already, I don't know. Are they just bumping Jazz Chisholm in the center field and arise to second base? It seems like neither of those are their best position. Is he better Is at second? Because he's doing no. And that's kind of, you know, a reason that a lot of people are saying the Twins kind of wanted to move on. They didn't want to move on from him, but were willing to move on from him was the fact that, you know, he's defensively, you know, a liability, if you will. And they saw him as a first baseman DH. And you can kind of find those guys anywhere. You know, uh, Aaron Gleeman has a great article um, in The Athletic talking about this. He says, you know, he's got a 784 OPS last year. There's somebody in the Twins organization that can come play first base and have a 784 OPS, and that's what they're looking to replace. They're banking on the fact that they can do that, and now they got their number two starter from a rise. So that's kind of where they're at. And that's, you know, the reason his OPS is in the 700s is because he doesn't slug. Like you're talking about the Marlins needed power, and he he doesn't provide power. Great hitter, someone that's really fun to watch and can be a table setter for you. 
but definitely not someone that's going to slot into the middle of your lineup and, and drive in a bunch of runs. Yeah, it's uh, Arias. I'll, I'll go cross sports for a second. It's, it's been one of the NBA, like, Draymond Green arguments for years. Like, Luis Arias in the right lineup is awesome, dude. I, I mean, he's going to hit 300. He's, he's, he's also, he's worked on his O pace on base, and he, like, he slugs a little for this kind of hitter. Like, he's kind of a double slash slashy guy. And maybe a little bit of that comes more in time, but not in Miami. And it, there's just not the dudes behind him. Like, you kind of like Arias, Segura, and Jazz Chisholm. Like, that's fun. Avisail, Avisail Garcia and Garrett Cooper, Jorge Soler, those are MLB guys. They don't have, like, their MVP candidate. Like, they need, they need a Ronald Acuna Jr. or someone in the middle of this lineup. And you'd be like, okay, if these other guys mess around and do their thing... Right now, Jazz Chisholm's projected for 26 homers and 25 steals, so he is a dude, but they, they're, Luis Arias would be better paired in a lot of other baseball lineups, which, which makes it feel a little weird. And going back to the Twins side of it, because we do need to circle up on my guy Jazz and everything he's saying, hey, let's circle back a couple weeks. Correa's a Met, <laughs> uh, and you don't have Pablo Lopez, and now... Correa in, Arias out, which when you talk about the defense, um, you know, Arias kind of hunting for what his MLB station will be. Uh, can he settle in at a first base or second base or DH? Or maybe maybe the it becomes his versatility, becomes the perk. Like you don't love him at a position, but if he needs to fill in for a couple weeks, that that can be his, his MO. Correa, you're getting platinum glove at shortstop, and you know what he's going to do on offense. And you brought in Pablo Lopez. That the Twins rotation right now, for Twins rotation, you don't have the Johan at the top, but my God, Pablo, Sonny Gray, Joe Ryan, Tyler Molly, th- those are guys that can give you, even Kenta Maeda coming back, those are guys that can give you a year as a 2-3 starter. And going back to the Jorge Lopez trade at the deadline last year, Jorge Lopez and Duran at the back of that bullpen, that's the best Minnesota's had back there in a long time. So, Twins fans, you got to be pretty hype right now. The Twins fans that I talked to were upset. Yeah, because they that's love a That's why I was rise. confused, because they love they him love as a, a rise. I know. Because yeah. day to day, the guy that can give you two hits every day, you fall in love with yes. that guy. And, and, and it is important to have, like, I know his OPS is in the sevens, and I do love OPS. He shouldn't be judged that way. Though. But he shouldn't be judged that way. Because you do need guys that, as long as the OPS is in seven, 750 above, like in between there, and you got the average and the on base, I think you can provide uh, 100% for your team. Now, it's when the OPS is in the 800s or the 750 and you don't have on base or batting average, me personally, I'm not a fan of. When someone's yeah, he's OPS, the opposite of that. Yeah, when someone's OPS is just slugging. I think they are not a value as valuable as they are perceived by other people because they don't help day to day. They get one homer every week, and then that's all. Joey, I think we need to awesome huddle twin. up here a little bit. All of Shit. Minnesota, all the Twins fans, can we huddle up a little bit and all have right, a sure. real I mean, Are we invited? We're in huddling, huddle? right? Yeah, you're in the huddle because okay. you guys are like Twins fans. You're rooting for the Twins. It's like gotten to the point now where Yankees fans are rooting for the Twins. I think. I want to see him in the postseason, of course. Yeah. So let's huddle up. The real problem here, guys. Okay. And it's been this way for a long time. You mentioned the starting rotation for the Twins. Those guys are all acquired in the last two years. They've yeah. had to trade. They've had to go. You know. You know. Sign free agents. All of these guys are from trades that are listed on fan graphs right now. But you have to develop starting pitching. That's been that has been the problem in Minnesota for the past you know decade and a half. You got to develop starting pitching, and you know like that's that is the key. If you're not going to go out and spend on marquee free agents and kind of get supplemental pieces, you better be developing your pitching. And they just haven't done that. What needs to change? I don't know. Do they have to get lucky in the draft? Probably. Um, do we have to change some things around, you know, in the minor leagues? Probably. But, like, we need to develop pitching. We've been able to do it with some players. You know, we haven't developed a, a star. I mean, Byron Buxton is that, obviously. And you got some of these guys who are, you know, Jorge Polanco, Max Kepler, Miguel Snow. These guys have been good ball players for you over the last, you know, five, six years. Luis Arise is another one. But the starting pitching, 
pitching in general. I mean, that's been the Achilles heel of the Twins organization for quite some time. And it still is. I mean, this is great. We're making moves here. That's why I'm saying if you're a Twins fan, you I get it stings because you like a rise, but you, we've been asking for pitching forever. So you're getting it now. And I think Pablo is going to be a, a, a great addition to that rotation, but we need to develop, man. Like that is, that's the key. But I, I mean, also credit to them for using their hitting to bring in all this pitching over the past few years. If it's not developing and you're not grooming ones and twos, which a lot of teams are not, uh, at least they've gone out and done this. And I, I wonder, I wonder if there's anything else for them. Like, like they kind of have DH bats available, and there's a couple guys in free agency that get you interested. A Luke Voigt, someone like that. Um, you know, if he can click for a little bit and you can plug him at DH, I wonder if there's anything there. Uh, but if you're, uh, if you're the twins, man, I mean, I think if, if you told fans your roster ended up here a couple years ago when they were looking at their rotation, like, I don't know, guys, this is pretty nice. Yeah. And the Marlins confuse me. Yeah. I think a little bit, right? So, yeah, we'll speak on jazz. I, I, I love the – and, Jake, you can attest this as a yes. blitz ball, ball player. You know, you ask jazz if he can do something, he's going to say, yeah, and I'm going to be the best at it. Like, love that. I'm going to go win a gold glove in center field, and Money Mike responded to him on Twitter being like, are you really? Yeah. It's not that easy, jazz. I love your confidence. I want to see you go out there and run around and make some plays. But – you got to get to work right now, like ASAP. Like, get out there right now and start taking some fly balls because it is a different animal. I made the transition. I'm not – I mean, Jazz is a superior athlete to me as far as going and getting it out in the outfield. Mm-hmm. I'm sure of it. But it's not easy. You think it's going to be easy. You think, I could if I can handle ground balls and shortstop and second base, I can definitely catch a fly ball. It gets a little dicey out there sometimes, bro. I uh I mean that that Jazz Chisholm quote I I'm already anticipating the the internet's gonna have a lot of fun with that because he's gonna have moments because that any baseball player has moments never never mind someone transitioning to the outfield that being said I mean long term I won't bet against Jazz uh dude is a freak athlete he was 94th yeah. sprint speed last year um like that him him telling the front office you don't get a center fielder, then I'm playing out there. <laughs> like, you guys, if you guys don't figure it out, I will. Um, yeah, I, I was going through the NL, and, I mean, there's, you know, there's some guys that, you know, Money Mike in division, that that guy plays a pretty good center field. Uh, Cody Bellinger just joined the Cubbies. He's uh, He's got some gold on his glove. Um, I, I don't know. I, I love the attitude, right? Like, uh, what what else yeah. do you want Jazz Chisholm to say? Like, yeah, there's going to be some growing pains, but I hope I'm <laughs> better day by day. Uh, That's what he sounds like? Go out and get it, Jazz Chisholm. Um, that would be refreshing, though, right? If Jazz was like, yeah, I'll be all right out there at first. You know, maybe I'll get better. Because <laughs> that's the truth. Right. It's just, <laughs> you know what? It's just... I, had a, I had another very cocky baseball player tell me that, okay? Mm. I don't know if you guys know Ryan Braun. He's a third baseman. Stunk at third base. Wow. Okay, he did. Sorry, yeah. bro. He goes, I'm going to move to the outfield. He goes, think about all the left fielders in the game. And this is true. At the time, left field in baseball was just you put your donkeys out there. Mm-hmm. And he goes, man, I'm going to be the most athletic third uh, left fielder out there. I'm going to win a gold glove, no problem. Ryan Braun does not have any gold on his glove. I don't think, you know, like that wasn't in the cards for him. Different scenarios. I know Jazz, like I said, used his 94th percentile in sprint speed. That means something in center field. Well, it's gonna be it's gonna be difficult. Alex Gordon, third baseman, like Ryan. Yes, Bronte, well, that's that is the one you can out. point Gold to. Glover, yes, yeah. Gosh, and he was good. and yeah. Belly was a first baseman. He was on the compound. They did the live show, and they were talking about that. So first baseman going up, and then went to center field and won a Gold Glove. His I screenshotted it, and we posted the clip. But he was, thought he was going to be short his whole life, and then he's like, and then I, I was six three one year. I was like, oh well, your dad played major league baseball. I think. You, you thought it had a chance of panning he, out. He wasn't positive on genetics. His mom, 4-2. Oh, no. Hot. Um, did Whoa. I tell you that... The, All 4-2 women or his mom? What are you talking about? The Marlins yeah. also might have some better help on the way. I don't know if you guys know this rumor. They're very close to signing another player. Better help for you guys. Who can, can be your 
Who can be mm. your better help? Well, actually, it's better help. Working with a therapist can get you closer to the best version of you because when you feel empowered, you're more prepared to take on everything life throws at you. And man, it does. Life will do that. If you're thinking of giving therapy a try, BetterHelp is a great option. Convenient, flexible, affordable, and it's entirely online. You're going to fill out a questionnaire, get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time. No additional charge. I always like that. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit BetterHelp.com slash TalkinBaseball. Name of the show, people. BetterHelp.com slash TalkinBaseball. 10% off your first month. Go check them out, and there's a link in the description. I don't know if you guys know this. The Marlins are very close to signing someone like everyone's kind of saying it's done. Yuli Gurriel. Hmm. Hmm. So another kind of contact first bat. So maybe their maybe their new theory is let's try to contact teams to I, death. I, I believe they did say they were going to go that way, uh, and that's. I'll uh, what like the Indians or the Guardians? Excuse me, like yeah, that no, but of? I think it was last off season they said they were trying to build or during or during the trade deadline. They they at one point it was reported that like they're in on on average and small ball. And I think Mattingly was like, what? <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. I'm for a few people. Toronto. Like I'm into that. Like I'm into that. I Ooh. think there needs to be balance in the lineup. You can't just have a bunch of sluggers because it's balance. awful to watch. They don't have any awful sluggers. to watch number one. And yeah, then yeah, two, yeah. like, you know, you know, you're saying like a rise and, and, and these guys, you put them at the top of the lineup as table setters and let the guys slug behind them. Great. The Marlins need to, to find that, that slugger though. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I need don't a know. pop guy. Why did we ever doubt Jeter? Why did we ever doubt him? He left. We're at Koopa Loop, you know? Rope yeah. some doubles. Is he coming back? Sign Gary Sanchez. Sign a shortstop. Joey's there. Don't make <laughs> Joey Don't Wendell. make 33-year-old Joey Wendell play his first full season at shortstop. Can we do a fun exercise real quick? Oh, yeah. Okay. Like uh, okay. herpes? <laughs> Burpees you done lifetime. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. Hey, listen, you said the Marlins, they're, you know, they wanted to change their organizational philosophy to, you know, bat on ball, you know, let's run, let's do all that stuff. If you were the GM or the owner of a team, you're the owner GM, what's your Crane. like one thing? What? Uh, Crane is currently owner GM. Sure. What's your like, your, your, your one thing? Is it, I want to, I want a pitching team. I want power. Like, what's your organizational, like, Philosophy. what do you want for it? Yes. You want a baseball skill, not like a mental thing? Whatever you want, coach, GM. Hmm. What are you going to say? Gumption? Yeah. Thought I was so. going to say tenacity, actually. Mm. But it's all oh. the same thing. I'm uh, starting pitching. Oh fucking day long! Yeah, I, think so. I just want starters. We'll figure it out offensively. That's the Indians. You just or the Guardians. Sorry, both of you. Hey, they went to the playoffs. Leap that. Um, yeah, but I don't know. That's just that's wait. I got luck. one balance. Oh god, mm. that's just. I choose good balance. luck with that. That's just <laughs> good so, luck with that. It's so brutal because there's none of these organizations are saying like, you know what? We don't need to worry about starting pitching. Let's, no, no, but yeah, they don't make it a five years ago. priority. I think, uh, we'll just get all the relievers and the Rays yeah. for a little bit. Like there was 2018 to 2020 was like yeah. starting pitching. You can just get four inning guys and both. It really was going that way. It swung back. It, it, I'm so glad it did. Cause that was an awful watch. And it's going back to like, oh shit! I think we need starters who can pitch five plus. Give me some athletes. Want... You know that's what Ooh. I like. Uh, I'll mold raw. You, you want raw you. talent? That's what you're doing with Co Tuck, right? Consistency. I want p starting pitching depth. Yes. And outfield defense. Power hitting. That's what I want. Contact hitting speed. I want everything. Yeah. That's what I was doing. Balance. Okay, that exercise did not work. I'm Makes sorry. Sense. In my head, it was much better. 
Let's talk about some Tommy John guys. So these are guys mm-hmm. coming back from Tommy John. Have your eye out for them. We saw Verlander mm. look really good. Won a Cy Young. Not the norm. I believe at this time last year I said I'm not counting Verlander yeah. as a Cy Young comeback. He's just a different breed of of player. Everyone else you got to be a little timid about. Now, Noah Syndergaard did get traded, did provide value uh, with his deal, but then you have a lot of guys who have setbacks. But is there any, I have the list here, like big impact, Dustin May for the Dodgers. Is that kind of the biggest impact comeback on a team that's going to be in the playoffs? They might go slow with him because you want him for the postseason. They think they're going to be in the, in the, in the playoffs probably without him. He's the biggest one I'm seeing on here that like, Ooh, yeah. It, it, it depends. Glass now's on there. And I mean, you know, he would be the raise, you know, they could have a serious one too this year with McClanahan becoming the, the dude he's become. And if glass now is back to being glass now, I mean that, you know, they could have an argument for best one, two punch in major league baseball. If he's right, that, and he kind of came back at the end of the last last year, but he kind of cinder guarded. It was kind of Bueller too. So the Dodgers got two that. guys. Yeah, but Bueller. I mean, he's on. You know, he's like maybe back Gla- in a playoff bullpen. Role. Yeah, like okay. Glasnow yeah. came back. He's going to be fully back. So that's exciting for Rays fans. Uh, tough for the AL East. Uh, the other guy that, well, a this list started with Forrest Whitley, which I was just like, God damn it. If the Astros this year, if we're looking down mm-hmm. in their rotation and Whitley finally clicks, he's a name that a lot of prospect people have heard about for a while. And they've also got, who's the other guy? Hunter Brown? Like, if I see the next wave of Astros pitchers, then it's like, all right, let's buckle up for another another decade because that's what's coming. But, um, Jakey boy. Yes. We did this exercise with the Twins. Everyone is traded for over the last two years. And then we go to the Astros page on roster resource on the fan graphs website. Every single one of them was developed by the Astros. Mm. It's a joke. This is what I'm talking about people. I mean, what they've been able to do. And then you're adding forest in there too. If he comes back and it's something, I mean, they don't even have Hunter Brown listed here, which is another one, but you got Framber, Christian Javier, Lance McCullers, Jr. Luis Garcia and Urquidy. All signed or drafted by the Astros. It's a joke. They're yeah. the model right now, man. Yep. Bryce Harper on this list and Pat Guy. <laughs> nice. That is good. There's a lot of guys in this. Ryu is coming back at the, the All Star break. If the if Blue Jays say we he can help us out here, um, then there John Means for the Orioles is interesting. Mm. They might be in it. Oh, this wasn't on our sheet, but the, the Rogers Center's moving in their walls. How about that? Saw that. All the, it was all, interesting all, all the hitters were like, hey, remember when we were playing in Dunedin and Buffalo and we hit <laughs> like a lot of home runs? Yeah. Let's do that. Did they did they announce it's officially a move in? I, I heard that they haven't announced what yes. the dimensions they're are. They're moving yeah. in. Fences, and I know the wall heights are changing. But and they're stuff raising too. the walls. Yes. I believe the the alleys are going to be short now. Center field so, distance reduced from 400 feet to 397. Left center power alley, 375 to 366. That feels like homers. Uh, the fence in right center power alley will come in from 375 to 357. So, yeah. That's, yeah, the power alleys are, like, in. That was already a place to hit. Yes. I, well, well, it's changed over the last couple of years. Uh, the ball, All the ballparks are playing differently because of the humidor that – they're storing the balls in. So uh, I forget who put it out on Twitter. Someone put out like the, you know, the on um, baseball savant, the list, like the best home run, home run parks. And the Rogers center was uh, smack in the middle. And that used to be a place you went. And if you didn't hit a homer in a series, you're pissed. Uh, Chase field out in Arizona, another place that's really been affected by that. The humidor is, um, and they just become average ballparks. So I guess, they, they're seeing this data and they want it to go back to a hitter's park. I don't know how, like, who makes those decisions for these teams? Yeah, how like, is it sanctioned? How is it sanctioned bit. is also, like, kind of... I, I don't, don't think it... Uh, yeah, it, it must be approved by someone, but I don't know, like, who who's doing this. Cause it seems Good like we're moving that. fences every single year now. Yeah, I feel like you need to have a time limit on this. Like, 
you get to move your fences and then you can't move them again for 10 years. Because otherwise you just sign but a bunch teams- of lefties and then move right field in. Or you sign a bunch, you know what I mean? Like you can literally alter it year to year. And I don't know, there might be parameters around this that we don't know, but it does seem like it happens a lot. Like, but it's not, We haven't seen like one team do it the a Mets. bunch of years, right? The Mets did it like five times over 10 years. With been that many new times? stadium, you get some, you get a little extra caveat. Yeah. You get there like an extra we're, move. We're figuring it out. Like when you find out what the wind tunnels are. And I, I know Roger Center, it's also that the walls are like different heights throughout. It's not like a uniform height, right? Because why was, are we raising any walls? Like a home run, like robbery, robbing a home run is very cool. Like that's like a, as cool of a clip you can post in baseball, and we're raising walls. Like I, I agree, I totally agree on that. Although we've seen they already have some some decent sized walls in the Rogers Center in left field. You've seen be Ben Revere go make plays up there. Mm. You've seen Kevin Pillar like climbing these walls. They're already like decent sized walls. I got the tweet up right here. It's our guy Paul Sporer. Shout out you, dude. Um, he just took a screenshot shout from Baseball Savant. So shout, shout out, out you, for that. Dude. What are you, dude? Roger Center, 17th in baseball, Park Factor. And to me, that place is one or two in my mind. But the humidors really change things. What, what stadium currently has 350 to right? I want to I wanna see how many uh, home runs they would have had. Trev, it's 2012. Yeah. It's you. It's Ben Revere. It's Denard Span. It's Dozier. Ryan Dowmit. Ryan Domit. Yep. Chris Parmalee. Darren Masterani. Fans of the show may know his name. Drew Bue. What was it like the to be fun King? team? Yeah. We lost a lot of ball games that year. A lot of ball games. We we worked hard, you know. I, I wonder what our rotation was. I will say that. <laughs> Not very good, if I had to guess. Scott Diamond. Uh, okay. A tough Liriano year. Yikes. Yeah. Nick Blackburn. Wrigley's 355. Yeah. Liam Hendricks and Cole DeVries. What did it, what did it say that the new left field is going to be? So they had left field... Oh, that's the trade. 360, you said, something like that? 375 to 366 in left and 375 to 357 in right. So I like that. At least they just switched the numbers. I'm trying to find. Okay, lefts. Oh, my God. This website has what they're marked as and what they actually are. That's funny. So, it's, all right, Dodger is 366 to left. I wasn't... <laughs> Was that on Talking Yanks or here that Happer was talking about Wrigley's dimensions? And he was like, yeah, some of those numbers might not be right because they measured them with their feet about 100 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> a guy walked just, out. Just their stride length. He's like, We're looking like at, yards. as it, I did all the Blue Jays home games from last year. Okay. Now I'm just looking at left center. And if it was... If it was 368, which is Dodgers, and this is just expected, we're looking at like 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 more team homers, 15 to 20 more team homers to left. Now that right center, that comes into 355. Shit. People were already buying Dalton Varsho stock. Laddie. My goodness. Well, while we're talking ballpark shapes and renovations, we should mention Comerica's. Trev could have helped you out. Mm. We talked about that a little bit on the tabs. on this show or the or baseball today. That's a, that was a big park. Right now, last year, I'm, I got the Park Factor page up. Mm. Uh, can you guys guess the top three parks? For I'll, I'll do I'll do homers. I'll do homers. Uh, Go ahead. I don't know for homers. I know for Park Factor, it's Rockies, Fenway. And uh, Citizens Bank. Or no, 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 Cincinnati. Cincy. Yes, guess, nice, yeah. nice, yeah. James. Those are the top three. For homers, uh, Coors, Cincinnati, and then there's uh, two California teams in the three and four slot, Angels and Dodgers. Ooh. I think this gives the Rogers Center is going to have the shortest right center now if it's 355. Citizens Bank is 357. So that'll be the shortest left 
lefty power alley or whatever. Man. Manoa, Gossman, Barrios, Bassett, Kikuchi. That's kind of got to be bad news for them, right? Like, you basically know I'm going to give up. Man, that's just so. Two, two more homers than I would have. It's a it's lot. An but, yeah, thing but the Blue Jays, and... like, the team last year, they're getting like 50 homers out of this. That according to distance projected. Sure. No wind or anything. Not a ton of wind in the Rogers Center. Yeah. Fenway Park, number three in Park Factor. A lot of people in, in my world been saying we need to get Fenway out of the game. <laughs> Not me. I think it's awesome. I love, love it. it. It is a different brand of it's, baseball. Like, I, I say this kindly. I know Yankee Stadium, we have pop-ups to shallow right field. And they're, they're pop-ups that are homers. And for, But Fenway, it's a different kind of baseball. It's kind of cool because there's way more offense and, like, Fucking anything can do anything. But, man, watching games like, like Red Sox fans who just grew up there watching a lot, it's like it's way different. I mean, fly balls are singles, doubles. The outfield's got the corner. And the park factor shows it. Shows it. Like, there's just yeah. guys on base all the time. When, when you walk up uh, to the plate at Fenway and you – and their peripheral have this massive green wall and left, mm. and you know, like, hey, I can, I can just pop one up off that thing or pop one up over that thing, no problem. You understand they're going to feed you super, you know, tight inside and then pitch you away because right center, I mean, as a right-handed hitter, you're just like not going to go there, especially if you go in the alley in like the little triangle corner and like right center and center field, like that's very deep. And then you look down right field and that pole seems like it's right next to you. But it's hard to hit the ball that way for a right-handed hitter. So, like, there's all these things in your mind. You kind of want to pull the ball because right center is a beast. Yeah, but uh, lefties, But the way they pitch you, they don't allow you to do that. It, it, it becomes kind of like a mental game where you have to get the monster out of your head and just try to stay up the middle, and then whatever happens, happens. I wonder if the data shows, like, the, like the, the updated data, Fangraphs did a whole article about it at Yankee Stadium. Lefties, if you're not, like, a – Homer, homer hitter, it actually sucks because there's just not a lot of grass to find, especially when the shift was happening. For lefties at Fenway, you always think righties get more benefit because it's so deep, but there's a lot of grass for lefties that can mm -hmm. hit singles and doubles that way. And then if they can poke it opposite, mm -hmm. like how many like Ortiz outside pitches did he just throw the barrel at and just plop it off the monster? Like, I wonder the advanced numbers, how like lefties who have those skills, it's got to be the best ballpark ever. That's a deep that was a, big right. That was a Maurer discussion all the time. If Joe Maurer played in Fenway, what would his numbers be? Because he, I mean, how many balls did he hit down the line in left field? They were caught. Like there would have been doubles off the wall in Fenway. It was a lot. They did. I think they did. They ran the numbers. This is before we had computers apparently. So no one was really running analytics at that time, but uh, they talked about that quite a bit, like what Maurer would be at Fenway. And if anyone's a listener here and wants to put the numbers together, that'd be sick. I'd like to know. I mean, I can do it for hitters last year at Fenway. Yeah. Joe, Joe Maurer on that 2012 team, 319, 861 OPS. Whoops. Um, yeah, it goes, it goes back. We saw the Yankees build a team of all of right-handed sluggers because when you yank and Yahtzee a home run, you get it good. There's a good chance it's going to go. But if you flick one to right, those guys are also going to get homers that way. The Yankees went too hard stacked that way. But, yeah, I think if you're a lefty that can handle the bat at Fenway, like Freddie Freeman, if he was a Red Sox, would probably have a legitimate – two of his years he would be chasing 400. Would you bet on that? I'd bet on a DraftKings Sportsbook. I was going to say we were talking about the run factor at Fenway. You ever check out any of those lines, they're usually plus one, plus two for a big game and there's a couple big games left in football trev the conference championship is this weekend and at DraftKings, the official sports betting partner of the nfl you can bet five dollars and you'll get 200 in free bets instantly if you're not a new customer you can feel ooh, the conference championship thrills with the stepped up same game parlays Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code TALKIN. New customers can bet $5 on conference championships and get 200 in free bets instantly. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code TALKIN. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details.
the tails. Them tails. Them tails. The player in Major League Baseball who had the most flyouts projected to go 310 feet or more to left field last season was... Joey Votto. Freddie Freeman. Hmm. Freddie Freeman. Now I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna hit spray chart, and then I'm gonna change the venue to Fenway, and we're gonna see what that does for Freddie. Okay. Well, a lot of fucking lot of homers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-three. Is that taking more height? homers? It doesn't take in height. So doubles or homers, 23, 24, 25, 26 out of the park. So that doesn't take in height, but that's 27 outs that would have been extra base hits, extra probably. base hits for Freddie if he played at Fenway last year. Now, yeah. that is not Couple home and away games. So I would just do just home games and it would be less because you don't play all your games there. But still, that's, that's a lot. Josh Willingham, 35 donkeys that Marcus year. Simeon has the most. Home games. Wow. Baseball Savant kind of updated the way up a lot of stuff here. Marcus Simeon had 17 that would have been extra base hits at Fenway. I mean, what is Freddie seven? Art. What is 17 he had more 70 hits? extra base hits. <laughs> what is, uh, what does 17 extra base hits do for Marcus Simeon? Probably a lot. Probably a fucking, probably a nice year. He's fast too. I mean, Tough yeah. to hit in that new, New Texas ballpark. Dang. Dang. Anything else we want to talk about? Some, some notes at the end here? Well, we're at Fenway. Uh, the Sox signed. I'll check out Duvall's numbers. You're right. Adam You're right. Duvall. And we can we can twist that in. Adam Duvall, one for seven, I think. Uh, you guys, you know, famously, I had my Jakey Locke bet on his RBI total last year and got it right. Um, but, no, Adam Duvall comes in. Uh Plays a really good center field. We just talked a lot about dimensions. You got that deep part of center field in Fenway and, and heading out to right field. There's a lot of room to roam that way. Um, he'll be able to move around the outfield. And, Jim, I, I know it was, it was kind of your knee-jerk reaction to it, but, you know, the Red Sox, <laughs> we currently have the Red Sox who have Kike Hernandez listed as their starting shortstop. Uh, the Marlins with Joey Wendell, two guys who have never played a full year at starting shortstop. Elvis Andrews is still out there. Uh, or is there anything else going on that one of these teams is going to do? Because then if the Red Sox were to bring in a shortstop, Kike then can be, well, he could also Kike. He can play all over the outfield, all over the infield, and that's the ideal role you'd have him in. But as of now, Sox bring in Trev's Adam Duvall. They've made a lot of moves, and we've we... – we're kind of at the beginning of the offseason with the Bogarts thing. We were kind of down and they missed out on different players. And then Trevor Story gets hurt. And I think everyone in Red Sox Nation, is that what they call it? I don't know. They were upset. But as the roster started to take shape, as we're getting closer to spring training starting, I mean, I I don't I don't mind what they're throwing out there. Now I know they're in a tough division. I know they finished last in it last year. And it doesn't seem like necessarily like a, a Red Sox team that we're used to. But if, and it, you know, there's ifs, if these guys show up, I could see this team seriously competing, having a chance at the wild card. Like th there's enough good players on this roster. Chris Sale needs to come back. I think he just had a Humpty Dumpty quote. So kind of love that. Like, I, they need him to be back. His his quote was actually pretty good. He was like, "I'm, you know, I'm going to be 34, but technically my arm's 30, which is a great way of <laughs> great. great way of saying I've been hurt for a bunch he's, of years." Oh, I was born <laughs> armless. <laughs> you did think that? Oh, that's what he was saying. He grew it at four. I'd have to that. check. Duvall in the last two seasons, he played like half of the last two seasons, or not even half. I think in 2021, uh, but. 11 balls that would be extra base hits at Fenway Dang. in his home games only that were outs in those two seasons. But I, again, that's sound, I think he only played 50. What did he play in 2021? So last year he, he ended up playing 2021 was the year he played a lot of games. He played at 146. Oh, he got he traded. He got traded. Year. He yeah. got traded. Last year he got hurt. 86. And only played 86 games. So, Hey, I, you know, if you're Boston, you're talking yourself into 2021 Adam Duvall 
38 ding dongs, 113 RBI while playing Gold Glove defense. So I don't know. There's there's a little bit of a value play there for a guy that got hurt last year. And like Trev said, I mean, there's there's names on that roster. Can they all come together, put it together, and mostly get enough pitching? Because like Jimmy said, and like you were alluding to, like the Sox will hit. That their offense will click for sure. Will they be able to pitch enough? And they added some bullpen, so I circle the starting pitching, which we, we talked about all episode, basically. Circled. You circled that. I circled that. And it was, it was pretty funny. There was a, you know, Cubs Fest was this weekend. Did Twins Fest happen yet? Is that next weekend? Which one? I'll be leaving Baseball early Friday. The one in Ohio. Not the Ohio Twins Fest. Trev's going Not to that Twins one. Fest. Yep. He's going to see his guy Carlos out there. Maybe Pablo now. They should combine now. them. They should combine them. They should, both Twin Fests should meet in the middle. And if you're... Because they're twins. If you, if you attend the Twins Fest in Ohio, which is for twins, and you're a Twins fan, discount prices. But they... Uh, cut. Joe Maurer, I mean, that's famous genius. twin. Yes. Had twin girls. I mean, you can't fucking write it up any better than that. Gotta love that. Is she hey, the Rogers brothers. Listen, I thought I had something to say. I kind of forgot what okay. I was going to say. Happens. Hammer it. Ten seconds on oh, the clock for. Oh, behind the scenes. Yeah. Talk BTS. right here, people. Yes. Warehouse Willie hit me up. He wants to come to Minnesota with me. I don't know if he's mentioned that to you guys, but I was like, I don't know. <laughs> Run it by them. Okay. <laughs> That's some serious behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. He wants to come film and, and get scene. in there. I think he needs a vacation. <laughs> Trying to get to Minnesota. All right. I'm on vacation next week. We'll talk about that. He kind of wants to bunk up with me in my hotel room. I don't yeah. know how that's going to work, but it's good. That's we'll the talk. good stuff. There are some, some good clips from Cubs Fest. Ian Happ, the compound, a lot of excitement, Dansby, all that. Red Sox, they did their version and uh, the, the ownership and. GM oh, got, yeah. got booed pretty good. Yeah. Boo that man, they said. Pete Crow Armstrong was also at Cubs Fest. He's my PCA. new favorite player. Yeah, PCA. Who are those people trying to get rid of Fenway? I'm not going to out them, but a lot of people in my circle. Hmm. Yeah. All right, that's the episode. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hell yeah. Yeah. One dollar, if you do, uh, to <laughs> one of you. Slippery slope. Bow. Thanks, Zach. I have my Little League tryouts. I have to go judge a bunch of seven-year-old kids. Make sure they're good. Eddie. You know what I said? I said they all suck. <laughs>